are now my darling. What's up everybody, it's your boy King K and welcome to another tutorial Tuesday. Now in today's video, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be showing you guys the best settings you can possibly have to have the highest quality audio amongst your streams and recordings. Now, unlike my previous two tutorial videos on OBS Studio where I used a bunch of plugins and overlays and such, this is going to be covering everything you could do within the base version of OBS Studio itself. So if you guys enjoy this tutorial and you want to see more, be sure to smash the like button under this video as well as subscribe to the channel and check out my other tutorial videos as I'll be posting these as much as possible to help you guys out. But with all of that being said, ladies and gentlemen, Let's get into the action. All right, so first things first, let's go over the actual settings within OBS Studio itself. And you can find the settings tab under the controls panel over here. Or if you do not have the controls panel enabled, you can find the settings under file in the top left corner of OBS Studio. All right, so once we have the settings tab open, we want to head straight over to, and you guessed it, the audio tab. Now, there are some options that I'm not able to click due to the fact that I am busy recording on OBS itself, but I will still be going through every little detail with you guys. Starting all the way at the top under general, we have our sample rate. Now, there should be two options available here, 44.1 kilohertz as well as 4,800 kilohertz. Now, I could go into a lot of detail about how this changes the quality of your recordings and streams but for the most part and to keep this video short and sweet i'm going to ask you guys to keep this under 44.1 kilohertz now the second option is channels and generally there's a 7.1 surround sound stereo and a bunch of other options However, I'm going to tell you guys that you want to keep this on stereo because if you change this over to 7.1 surround sound, even though you have a 7.1 surround sound headset or a 5.1 or whatever you may have, some people watching your videos and content may not have that. And by choosing a higher setting such as 7.1, might make the audio really bad for some other people. So keeping this option on stereo will allow a simplified version of left to right up and down audio. Now moving down under global audio devices, I said this in my previous video as well, you want to have every single option available here set to disabled just like what I have right here. By doing this, it allows us to customize our audio options in more depth, add more filters, and a bunch of other things which i'll be going through soon moving along under meters we have our decay rate and it gives us the option of fast medium and slow however this does not really affect your audio quality whatsoever so for my case i just keep this option on fast it doesn't really do anything now the next option available is called peak meter type and it gives you two options sample peak and true peak this option similar to the decay rate then doesn't really have much of an effect on your overall audio quality if you guys are a bit wary and you have a slower or a weaker machine you may want to use sample peak however i have a pretty decent powerful machine so i just choose the true peak option now the next option available under the advanced tab is called your monitoring device now similar to the meters option we just covered this does not have a direct effect on your overall sound quality so whatever option you choose here doesn't really matter now scrolling further down to the hotkey section this as well just like the previous two options does not have a direct effect on your overall audio quality this basically just allows you to customize your hotkeys further from the hotkey section over here what this does is allows you to enable and disable push to talk and push to mute as well as add delays on push to talk and push to mute if you wish to have any that for the most part summarizes everything you can do under the audio tab so the next thing we're going to be going through is the audio section under output what you want to do is go over to output and scroll over to audio once you're under the audio options you'll see that there's about six tracks available similar to what i have right here what you want to do is set the first track bitrate to 320 and the rest of the tracks down to 64. now if you do not know what audio bitrate is let me elaborate the audio bitrate option heavily affects your sound quality the higher this option is the better your audio is going to sound both on stream and during recordings this includes your input and output quality if you're wondering how how drastic the difference is this is what i sound like in 64 bit quality and of course this is what i sound like in 320 bit quality now most content platforms whether it be live content or recorded content changes the audio bit rate according to the video quality options a user selects so if you have your quality set to 320 bit rate and a user watches your video in 1080p 
you'll see the video quality in 1080p as well as hear you at the highest bitrate possible. However, if a user watches your stream or video in 144p quality, for example, they'll most likely hear your audio in 64-bit quality as well. So by having this option set to the highest possible, you'll sound really good whenever you've been watching a high quality and you won't sound like you're speaking for a really bad intercom when somebody turns down the video quality. I'll be going through the reason as to why we only set track one to the highest quality and the rest of the tracks all the way down. Now that we're done with the audio options under output, we want to go over to streaming and recording. Now both streaming and recording has an option for audio track. What we want to do is deselect all of the audio tracks besides audio track one. And you want to do this for both the recording section and the streaming section. And now that we have all of the audio tracks selected to only audio track one, we can go ahead and click apply as well as okay to close the audio options. Back on OBS Studio itself, we wanna head over to sources, click on the plus button and then say audio output capture. When we click on that, we'll be greeted with this where we can name our new audio output. I'm gonna be labeling this as headset for my actual headphones. Once we've labeled it, click OK and we'll be greeted with this option right here. Now under the device option, we're gonna be selecting whichever output device we're using, whether it's headphones or speakers, any of the sort. We wanna leave the option use device timestamps enabled and once we're done with that, we can go ahead and click on OK. This will now enable us to have a headset audio tab similar to what you had before under universal audio devices. As for your microphone, we'll be adding this option using the same method as before. Under sources, click on the plus tab, but instead of audio output capture, we're gonna be selecting audio input capture. By clicking on it, we'll be given the same options as the audio output capture, except under devices, we're going to be adding your microphone, whether it be a headset microphone or a standalone microphone. Of course, this is only for anyone that hasn't manually added their audio devices as of yet. Now, if you're curious as to why I have so many audio tabs, that is because I have all of my application audio separate. If you guys are interested and want to have the same sort of setup, be sure to click on the video labeled in the top right. Next up, we're gonna be going into the details of those tracks that I mentioned earlier. What you wanna do is go over to audio mixer and under any of the audio options you have available, click on the gears icon and then scroll down to advanced audio properties. Once you click on advanced audio properties, you'll be given a tab looking something like this. Now yours may be a lot more simplified or a lot more complicated depending on how you have your thing set up. Firstly, under name, it'll display all of the audio devices or capturing inputs and outputs you have available. Next to name is status and it indicates whether or not any of your audio sources is active or inactive. Next to status, you have your volume option and you can change whether or not you'd like to see this as a percentage or in decibel format. You can use the arrow keys to either increase or decrease your volume levels, or you can directly select any of them and customize them to your liking. Next to the volume tab, you have mono option. Now you want to deselect any of the mono options that are enabled. Reason being is because stereo allows audio to be differentiated between left, right, up, and down. Mono audio combines left, right, up, and down all into one audio format and will sound terrible if you're playing a game with directional audio for any of the viewers watching your video or live stream. So make sure to deselect any options that are set to mono audio. Next to the mono option is balance. Now balance is exactly what it sounds like. It balances audio between the left and right ear. Now not all of your audio sources may have this option, but for those who do, you can customize it to either play more to the left side or to the right. Next to balance, you have the option called sync offset. This is another option you generally will never use unless you have a weak computer and there's a bit of an offset in your audio and you need to customize it in such a way that it balances out. Basically by upping the timer or decreasing the timer on any of these sources will create a delay in milliseconds, seconds, or even minutes between all of your audio sources. So for example, I have my Discord audio now set to five milliseconds. So if all of my other audios are now synced, Discord will only play five milliseconds after the fact. Next to sync offset, we have audio monitoring. Now this option brings us back to the audio monitoring tab under settings. Basically what it allows you to do is exactly in the name. It allows you to monitor all of your audios in real time. For example, my microphone, if I were to change the monitor off to monitor and output, 
I will be able to hear myself through my headphones or selected audio device. I personally find this to be extremely annoying when actually recording or streaming. However, it may be helpful if you're trying to be quiet or you need to set up your microphone in future. But for the most part, I keep this off at least on all tabs. If anything, you may have your microphone output on if you wish to hear yourself and make sure that your audio quality and everything is all right with your microphone. Moving further along onto the tracks option, this brings us back to the audio tracks option within settings. All of these will most likely be selected for all of your audio sources. What you want to do is deselect all of the options besides audio track one. This will force OBS to only use audio track one, which we have set to the highest quality possible. We do not use multiple audio tracks on OBS Studio itself unless you have something like a dual PC setup or go a or a go xlr or some sort of separate mix amp now the final option under advanced audio properties is the active only sources by clicking on this it will only show you all of the audio sources that are currently active by deactivating it as you guys can see i have a much larger list now it will show you all of the audio sources i have active and inactive now i have added a few new audio sources since the last time i actually opened this tab so i'm going to go ahead and click off all of the other audio tracks besides one for any of the sources I currently have inactive. This is important as you want to do this every time you add a new audio device or source. You want to do this so that whenever you change an inactive source to active that it works off the same audio track options. It may also be displayed as inactive if the source you have does not have any audio at all. Once you've gone through all of these options, decrease, increase, level out your volumes and balances, and obviously change your offsets and monitoring and of course audio tracks to one, you can go ahead and click on close. Oh, hello again. That pretty much covers all of the audio settings you need within OBS Studio itself. It may have seemed a little complicated, but I hope I could help you guys simplify it. By using these options, you have crisp and clear audio all the time guaranteed that is for real all this video is going to be covering i really 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 hope i could have helped you guys out if you guys have any more questions or would like to have any more knowledge about something specific be sure to let me know down below in the comment section and whilst you're there okay be sure to smash the like button as it really really helps on my channel as well as subscribe for more tutorials and other sorts of content because i post a bunch of different stuff if you made it this far to the video though much love to you i really 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 do appreciate it and I'll be seeing you guys in another video or stream or short or whatever I post next very, very soon. Until then, y'all, much love. Peace.